Hey everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I just reverted my flight and deleted a recording because of this. This does not look. Well, it's beneath the fairing. This is a structural fairing that I've used so far. It's designed to protect the craft during launch against air resistance, which this thing needs considering it's flat front. Um, the problem with this vessel, strictly speaking, is just the fact that it does not have the power that it needs to get to the moon. This is a moon station, and we intend to take it there. Uh, we need science points. We pretty desperately need science points. And the only way I can see to uh, get that done efficiently in the future is by doing multiple moon landings. It's a good In order to do that, I want to make sure that our infrastructure is is doing well out there so to that end I have decided to put a station out in orbit of the moon and from there we are going to do multiple landings we're gonna I'm, I'm in the future I'm going to send a lander up to this station I'm gonna attach it to here and we're going to conduct multiple landings, collect multiple science experiments, and bring them home all at once. It's the most efficient way of collecting a lot of science quickly. To do that, though, step one is to get this space station out to the moon in the first place, with which I am having trouble. I made an attempt earlier. It failed. So now I'm basically going to see if I can't fix that. I'm going to try to fix it in the following ways. Number one, I'm adding another stage to it. Uh, stage meant specifically for vacuum propulsion. Uh, number two, I am going to be adding extra fuel tanks onto... Why is that not... Right there, there we go. Oh, come on. Some extra fuel onto our flight stage. For our launch stage, specifically. And I'm hoping extra fuel gives us the, the distance that we require. We shall see. Is there anything else I wanted to fix? Yes, there is actually one more thing I wanted to fix. Let me delete this fairing. As it occurred to me, I don't really think there's a way that I can do this any slimmer. There is, however, a way that I can save weight. Uh, I am, this is cheesing a little bit, but one of my problems, the reason you saw that uh, crew compartment over there was because, actually I can't just do this, can't I? Yeah, I'll do this. At a fuel tank, I will empty it because it's only there for, uh, it's basically only there to be a structural piece. And I will add, I will add our docking bits onto that. Hmm. Yes, we'll worry about individual attachment construction later. Make sure that this is in the right spot. Yeah. That'll do just fine. In fact, da -da -da -da, might as well do it like that. Pave the road for a lot of expansion in the future. Let's build the fairing again. You get to see this, at least, now that I'm back here. Click, click. Uh, click. I said, uh, click. Why not? All right, fine. We'll just do this then and close it. There. All right. So, check the staging one last time before I do this. We got boosters here. Good. Those start. The stage goes here. Those two detach. This starts. That detaches. This starts. And then the separate stage for the fairing. All right. Save it. OK. Again, because of my terrible short-term memory, I'm not sure if I, uh... oh, hang on. There's one more thing I want to just quickly check. Vehicle assembly. All right. It was literally just a glance I needed to get. So 
Uh, one of the contract requirements is that we require. Uh, well, that's a little unstable. One of our contract requirements is that we require a space station that has room for six Kerbals. Well, this one has five, but it's fine because I'm going to attach a lander to it too. And because the game is a little dumb that way, it's going to think that the docked vessel constitutes a part of the actual station itself. So it's going to assume that the station has seven parts when I attach the lander to it. Works in my favor, and I'm, I'm pleased for it. Wow, that wobbled a lot. I might want to put more structural bits on this. If this proves to be a problem, we shall find out soon. So yeah, this is not a contract that we're going to complete on one launch, but you know what, that's fine. I am okay with that. Can sort of slow our acceleration. Want to see if we can't hang on to as much fuel from this stage as we possibly can. Also a little late on the gravity turn, but oh well. Please don't tip over. I'd be very pleased if you did not tip over. You see you're trying to tip over, I'm not gonna let you. Alright, save fuel. Basically the way this is going to work for like longer space travel and this is also a very good a good starting point for me to start working on my interstellar space infrastructure basically the way things are going to work is we're going to have may maybe even some uh, space vessel construction is going to take place not on the surface of Kerbin but in orbit and that's what we need space stations for an area to safely do that kind of construction From that point on, missions are going to proceed pretty much as follows. The crew is usually going to be transported up, unless, you know, they went up in the crafts themse themselves. Otherwise, the crew is going to be transported up to space stations using, hopefully, space planes that I get better at in the future, or just spacecraft that I launch up there. Spacecraft would be more expensive, obviously. Space planes would be more efficient and reusable. But we take that up there, we dock them, the crew gets transported up, basically and then the crew embarks on their journey to wherever they go from the space station on the vessel that we load them onto. Okay, we're doing much better now. We got a lot more fuel. All right. Then, uh, once they, you know, they complete their journey, in this case, let's say, let's imagine future moon missions. Basically, we're going to carry them out uh, to the moon station where there's a lander already waiting for them. They can then perform, hopefully, several landings with the fuel that we're going to carry out there to that station. They can perform several landings, uh, collect all the science data that they have in one, at once, and then using some kind of spacecraft design specifically for like interplanetary travel, let's call it, so from station to station within space, out, you know, just in space, they can carry it all the way back to the Kerbin station, where they will be carried back to Kerbin. Now this may seem like it's a lot of unnecessary steps, and it probably is. There are probably better ways to do this. But if I am serious about long-term exploration of space, then this is something that I have to get good at. Because there's just no way that I can craft vehicles, or you know, spacecraft on Kerbin that have enough power and fuel to do all those things without docking and refueling somewhere along the road. I'm actually just going to cut the engine here, fly up closer to the apoapsis, start burning again. This should be a more efficient use of what little fuel we have left in this stage. And as always, I want to I utilize this stage for as much as I possibly can. I'm not going to... I was thinking of, you know, uh, tossing the fairing, but I'm a little too worried to do that. All right, let's increase the burn a little bit, see if we can't at least get into orbit with this stage. I'd like it if we didn't have to use up our poodle. 
the fuel for our poodle for that. Eh, it's not going to be enough, though. There's not a problem. We're not that far away. It might be enough to get our periapsis to show up. I'm just barely not going to get into orbit with it, though, I think. Yep, just barely. 10,000 meters shy. No problem. Uh, let's cut the engine. Detach. Enjoy some of this really beautiful music. Now I'm also going to deploy the fairing. There we go. And I'm going to wait a little bit more until we get closer to the apoapsis. Like right there. Turn us to retrograde, uh, prograde. Switch off stage view. There we go. Just a little bit. Wow, that poodle pushes us very slowly. All right, well, we have a periapsis now that's above 70,000. Now we gotta get this thing out into the into lunar orbit and keep it there. Let's see if it can do it. Now, something I was wondering a while ago, that's why I'm playing with this marker right now, is, is that uh, in every single diagram that I've ever seen of, uh, of the Apollo space launch, it basically went around the moon in the opposite direction. I always approach the moon from its right side, right? But the Apollo program seems to have done it from the other side. But I can never plot a course to do that. And I know that the Apollo program uh, orbited the... Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's how they did it. I wonder if that's how I should do it, too. I think that's how I am going to do it. Although, this doesn't seem as, uh, as fuel efficient. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try doing it like this. It is, it is ultimately, I believe, uh, less fuel that we have to burn. But we're still gonna end up orbiting it that way, though, I think. Ah, oh, well. This is probably not something that's, you know, worth me worrying about. See how good of a periapsis I can get here. 40, that's a little too low. That's too high. We're not going to hit this dead on anyway, so. I think I want to put my lunar station into about like 75,000 meters above the, loon, above, above the lunar surface. That should be fine. Let's orient ourselves towards our maneuver marker. There we go. Disable the SAS, and then let's fast forward to our burn. It's a 1.6 minute burn. One minute, six second burn. 1.6 minutes is actually not that. But I am going to stop here around three minutes just because I want to try something. Nope, still seems to think that it's a 1.6 minute burn, so... So we'll do that, reactivate the SAS. And I'm going to start burning around two minutes. Give us enough margin for error. Let's go. Oh boy, this is going to be a close one. So basically what I'm going to do is the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send a lander, just a lander, no uh, no command module, just a lander out to this space station. I'm going to dock with it. That's going to constitute the second stage of our space station's construction. 
and it'll also complete the contract. We're going to have two pilots on it, and we're also going to have a uh, uh, enough facilities for six Kerbals. So that will at least get that contract complete. And yes, we're not burning nearly fast enough. We should probably be burning a little faster. We don't have to worry about getting home with this. So we can use all the fuel that we have on board to just get there. like this game requires a little bit more dramatic music. In fact, I think when I played this uh, by myself, without... I'm, I'm hesitant about utilizing music other than the game music for YouTube uploads, for obvious reasons. Not that, you know, I'm... Not that monetizing these videos is anything that it's a specific ambition of mine at the moment, but... Sometimes I feel like the music in this game is a little bit undermines the the grandeur of what it is that I'm trying to do. I feel I feel like this uh, I feel like this game requires a bit more maybe a choir like a a, a low key choir or a, some ambient synth. Oh, bye bye there. Uh, that thing is going to decay, or I, I still don't know if it's orbital decay or orbital decline. Either way, that thing is technically on an orbit that's unstable, so it should very slowly be falling back down every time. Okay, we're getting close to completing our burn, so let's see how we're doing. Doesn't look like it's going to be anything near what we wanted, but it should still take us close. I'm going to cut us. As soon as we get to the minimum periapsis. It's actually not that far away. We don't actually have a periapsis there, so we should probably burn a little more. Come on. That'll send us flying right into the moon. Did I ever do this? Okay, that'll that's actually perfect. There we go. Probably somewhat, somewhat different. Oops, we had a little frame rate problem there. All right. Okay. Let's go. Speed her up. We're probably going to be spending a little bit more fuel on correcting the orbit too, because look at that. We're going to come, we're going to come out underneath it. Oh no! Hey. We are actually flying around it the opposite direction. Cool. I'm not sure if this is more efficient or not, but considering this is the way that the lunar scientists, the, the, the space engineers working for NASA did it, did it, I'm gonna assume this is the way you wanna go. It's gonna cause problems in the future if I can't get all of our spacecraft to do exactly this, but I mean, hey. Establishing orbit's going to be a lot easier. Look at that. Look at how quickly that line is receding. I've toured around with a lot of very cute little ideas for this game. Um, stuff that I really wish I could do. Like, one of the things that I really uh, thought would be a fun thing to do, like a, kind of like a, a challenge for this game, would be to... Well, first of all, conducting one of these one of these missions with absolutely no help, as in no reverts, no uh, no redos, no saving, doing a mission like that, and also doing it in real time, that would be a pretty fun thing to do, I think. 
well, you know, <laughs> fun is a relative term, obviously. But another idea that occurred to me was, what if you did a space flight entirely from the internal cockpit view of the pilot? All right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna bring our orbit down to make sure that it's even. Still towards retrograde. Down to 75. Overdid it just a bit, but that should be fine. And as a last step, let's even out the orbit. Uh, I'm gonna set the moon as a. Can I do that? Can I? I'd like to set the moon as a target. How would I go about doing that? Hmm. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to eyeball it then. Uh, I'd, because, you know, I'd, I'd appreciate a, uh, a node, an ascent node. Like right here. Going to have to point ourselves toward the, uh, toward the normal vector, not that way. Go. Got it. Is that not moving us in the right direction? Looks like it's not moving us in the right direction. How is that? Nope, it is pointed in the wrong way. Oh my goodness. Uh, funny. We're moving that way, shouldn't it? Oh well. All right, anti-normal it is. Let's push it this way then. Keep her nice and steady. The uh, periapsis and apoapsis jumping around like that isn't really a problem. It's just because I'm not pointing directly at the vector. It means that uh, I'm also kind of my orbit is, is uh, changing shape somewhat. Shouldn't matter too much. All right. That's close. Still need a little bit more of a correction. Look right about here over this crater. toward the normal vector this time. Perfect. 76 and 72. I might as well correct that. As long as I'm out here and I still have some fuel left. I don't know what the ideal height is over the moon, by the way, for a space station. I just figured that this is easily approachable from both the surface and the and Kerbin. So we might be pointing the wrong direction because we want to extend that one. Alright. That'll do. Our new space station is now in orbit of the moon. We have our first lunar station. Let us turn on the lights. And we'll point her toward the anti-normal vector. Kind of put her upright. Why are you... Oh, you're trying to move back that way. No, just like that. There we go. All right.
there we have it. Now, the last thing we have to do before we call, this, call it quits for today is we have to rename it. This vessel is now a space station, and it is property of Rockomax, as they were the ones who funded it. So we're going to call this the Rockomax... Is it lunar with an A or lunar with an E? Oh, well, we're going to do it. We're going to do it like this right now. Or actually, um, there. That's the way to spell it, right? That's exactly how to spell it. I know. Of course it is. I mean, hey, I mean, uh, they, they spelled moon mun, right? So this is how we're going to do it. So this is our lunar station. This is going to be... I'm sorry I went quiet. I'm I'm looking at how the, the moon looks very far away. And I'm thinking that maybe we do kind of want to bring it closer. But that is something that we can ponder another time. Actually, it isn't really. Because, because if we ponder it another time, it's going to have a bunch of stuff attached to it. And moving it might not be that easy. So I'm just going to bring it in closer. I'm just going to do it. I'm sorry if, <laughs> sorry if this is bugging somebody. But we're going to do it. I'm going to bring it into 45,000 meters. That's going to be our, our new height above the, above the moon. There. Not going to be able to warp around it as quickly, but that's fine. The reason I, I decided to do this, by the way, to, to bring it down this much, is because the station has more importance in relation to uh, landings than it does to going back to Kerbin. Going back to Kerbin is pretty easy. Landing on the moon and going back up is a little bit more fuel-consuming, so uh, the closer it is, the easier it is to dock with it. So this is going to be our Rockomax lunar station. Now we truly are complete. So let us turn her in the right direction. There we go. Why are you not? Oh, because you're still. Don't, 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 please. Uh, okay. There we go. Like that. And we have our station. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. In the next episode, I'm going to be bringing a lunar lander, a specialized lander that I'm going to build specifically for the purposes of just landing and flying up and landing again. And we're going to dock it with this. That's going to complete our contract. And it's going to pave the way for us to start doing uh, continued research on the lunar surface. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. And I will see you in the next episode.